Well, howdy guys and gals, welcome back to The Social Regressive. I've got a freezer packed all the way to the top with meat back there. Uh, we just dressed the, uh, the deer out, did all the processing yesterday. Thank you to Billy and Cole, my buddies out there. Uh, we have some of the finest breakfast sausage that a man could ask for, and I'll put a recipe down below. I just grabbed it off all recipes and tweaked it a little bit. They asked for sugar, and uh, I don't wanna put sugar in my uh, breakfast sausage. But anyway, I'll put uh, what I did down below because it tastes freaking amazing amazing. But yeah, uh, before we launch into the story of how the hunt went, I wanted to uh, uh, get into the caption contest. I put a picture out on YouTube for you guys to comment on, and this is uh, some of the best engagement I've ever had. 94 folks got back to me, and I'm going to uh, read off some of my favorites here. So, okay, let's get that photo up. All right, so here's what they were dealing with. I'll put the name of the contributor at the bottom. When your buddy at the range tells you his 50 BMG doesn't kick... Guy at the gun counter, want me to mount your scope for you? Sure, that's mighty nice of you. Scope relief? We don't need no stinking scope relief. <sighs> Maybe I installed the muzzle brake on backwards. This? No, it wasn't from the scope. I banged my melon in the blind while leaning down to pick up the brass. That's actually much more honorable. That's not what they meant when they were talking about using your third eye. Here's a quick lesson on how to become a pirate. It's all fun and games until the deer starts shooting back. My wife tried to kill me, but couldn't finish the job. No, my wife would finish the job. Yeah, that Tasco doesn't belong on the 300 Win Mag. And actually, okay, here's a little aside. My, my brother's first uh, centerfire rifle was actually a 300 Weatherby Mag, and it had a Tasco on it with a pretty short eye relief. We uh, gave ourselves a, a couple kisses there. When your buddy says, watch out, after letting go of a fully loaded tree branch. Okay, I've been there on a hike. Thought short stocking was a great idea. What? The rifle has to fit kids. I was snuggling with my scope when the gun went off. First day with my new scope. The deer started it, but I finished it. I remember my first time shooting a rifle. Did you see the size of that skeeter? Yeah, but you should see the deer. So you just look through this thing and put the cross on the target, right? Is there a company that makes foam scope eye guards? Turns out the squirrel wasn't dead after all. Actually, I have a fun story about this. Tag, you're it. Bambi put up a fight, but was no match for the mighty assassin. First time shooting a rifle? Why would you ask such a thing? This is why you make sure it's dead before leaning over for a picture. No Hindu jokes yet? I fell into a burning ring of fire. You should see the other guy. Actually, you should. <laughs> We're gonna see him here in a second. Glad I had the big scope and safety glasses. Three yards was a tough shot. <laughs> okay, now here's somebody uh, telling a, a sad story here. Listen to this. When I was 13, I knocked myself out and permanently detached my right clavicle from the top of my rib cage. Single shot 50 BMG with a muzzle brake that did nothing. They drew first blood, not me. I love that one. <laughs> Thank you guys for all of the captions. That was a whole lot of fun. It was really fun sitting in the stand after that because I, you know, was waiting the usual half hour for uh, the the animal to expire. So I'm just kind of scrolling through some of these. I had great service out there, but I'm scrolling through and uh, laughing at some of the comments that I got. So thank you guys very much. Uh, <laughs> it made the day even a little bit more fun. It was already a very high point, as you're going to see. Uh, we're going to talk about the gear in another video, but today we're just going to talk about the hunt itself. Uh, so I was out there with Winchester. Winchester invited a handful of us to perform some experiments out in the field, and we were working with Indian Hill Outfitters. So if you are ever interested in picking up one of these giant Missouri bucks, like the one that I got, I'll show you some pictures here in a bit. Uh, they have some absolutely huge corn-fed monsters out there. And uh, so yeah, check out Indian Hill Outfitters. Those guys have about 9,000 acres that they, uh, that they work with. They have some that's leased, you know, and a lot that they actually own. And uh, so, yeah, they, they have a lot to work with and a lot of uh, great angles. It was kind of fun each morning as we went out. Uh, the guides would be, you know, checking the wind, and they'd be looking at different spots where they think things might be moving. We're looking at the weather. And uh, so, yeah, they would, they would pick some spots that they knew about out in over these fields or out in the woods. And uh, we saw a lot of really cool stuff. And it... It was just awesome to be out there with some really cool folks. The other uh, riders and uh, 
other folks that you know put media out there like on Instagram and uh, other media like that uh, really cool folks it was really fun to just go back to the cabin and uh, you know sit around the table and, and talk about stuff and uh, it was just a really really good time so thank you Winchester for having me out for that there's gonna be a lot more info coming out in the future so make sure that you guys like share and subscribe and hit that notification bell down below uh, because we're gonna be talking about some pretty wild stuff you're not gonna want to miss out on the, the experiments that we performed uh, turned out very very well and you're not gonna want to miss uh, hearing what happened all right so to kind of speed things along a little bit we were out hunting for I think it was about three days and we just didn't really see any buck movement apparently they were on the lockdown they were you know out in the some of the uh, the deeper draws and out in the forest and they just were not coming down to eat so apparently the lockdown is real uh, the weather was a bit on the warmer side as well um, at best we would see some does and some yearlings come out and some little spikes and at worst we would see absolutely nothing so we would be out from before dawn until you know roughly the, the, the lunch period we'd come in grab a little bite to eat and then just head back out again until it was past dark and uh, we just weren't really seeing what we were after I, I started seeing some pretty magnificent uh, does and uh, but we were instructed to you know really go for that buck first to wait until you know we could get a buck out there because it, as many of you know what's usually going to happen is some of your uh, less timid animals some of your younger ones start coming in first and you get the does coming in and then eventually the bucks will kind of follow behind that so we would just kind of hang out and wait and uh, nothing really happened those first three days. But then finally on the fourth day, the weather broke. We started getting uh, some cold. We started getting uh, some, some sleet and stuff. So in the morning, uh, I was up in a tree stand and you know I had my rifle all slung up, had my, my, my pack right here hanging beside me. So I'm just hanging out. I'm pretty warm in my clothing. Everything's going along pretty well. And then my phone dings. I had remembered every single time that I was out there to turn my phone off, to turn the ringer uh, off out there. And uh, this time I forgot. And I received a, a text message from a buddy that was uh, out hunting as well. And he had gotten himself a, uh, uh, a good doe. So I, I, I turned it off after it had rung twice. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have just scared off every deer in this area and then I see a little bit of movement out in front of me just probably about 60 seconds later and this thing comes across and it, it sort of trots out and I can see oh okay this is actually a big coyote and now it's not what I'm after but at least it's a good sign that my phone probably didn't scare off everything in the woods so this coyote comes across and he's just kind of hanging out behind this little uh, copse of trees and he's just sort of looking around seeing if there's anything going on and then he just very slowly walks across and you know if you've seen some of my previous videos i wanted him bad and you can see in the footage here that i did track uh, him with the scope uh, this is the tacticam and let me pull this guy out where did i put that bag the footage that you're going to see today is courtesy of tacticam i wanted to test one of these out uh, for a little while as soon as i saw how these worked i was uh, just amazed. I wanted to see if I could uh, put this to good use out in the field. This is the Tacticam FTS and this attaches to the back of the scope. You can still see actually through your scope but there's a prism in there that bounces some of the light around and goes to this little camera right here. This is an action camera that you can also mount to the side of the camera if you want to point forward. So if you're a bow hunter you can slap this on and then maybe when rifle season comes around you can slap it on your scope. And I had this on that Leupold VX6, really, really good scope. And uh, with this setup, I was able to see some really cool stuff. But I tracked along with him and I was really tempted to take this shot uh, because he was just gorgeous. He was big and you know, had a big full coat and uh, taking that pelt back would be pretty fun. He was only, you know, he wasn't even a hundred yards out. He was close. So yes, I was very tempted, but I was like, no, 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 come on. The weather is a little bit cooler. Maybe we'll get some animals moving this morning. And uh, so I just kind of went back to waiting. And then eventually I started getting bored and I was like, is that coyote still around? I, I, I'd love to nail him. So I'm looking around and then I hear this, this little kind of scritching right next to my head. And I look, I start to look left as I sit back down in my stand 
and there's it's a hollow log right next to me i'm on a you know a good living tree but the one that the branch is kind of attached to me over here is dead and i can see this little bit of amber in the sunlight and two juvenile squirrels just about this far from my head go tearing out of this thing we scared the ever-loving crap out of each other <laughs> so you know my heart rate is going um <clears throat> and i'm watching these guys run up the tree so i was like okay all right just just a couple squirrels they probably got the worst of it and probably shortened their lives by a couple minutes but uh i, I go back to sitting and all kinds of animals come across, woodpeckers and all this, and I'm still just not seeing deer. And then way off over here on the right, I start seeing right along the edge of the forest, there are these kind of undulating hills, and then these three uh, deer come across. Now, we only have a, a short while. We have, this is the, the last kind of full day of hunting. And then if we don't get anything, the next day in the morning, we're gonna you know, get one last chance, and that's pretty much it. So I'm thinking, <clears throat> these deer just aren't moving. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna, if there's something decent in here, I'm just gonna take it. I don't care if it's a doe, I don't care if it's a buck. And so I start tracking along and I see, okay, we got, uh, we got three does here. One of them actually looks pretty decent. This first one looks okay. So I started tracking along with the scope, as you can see here. Uh, she went behind some trees. They all kind of followed along, went down this little draw, and then started heading uphill. And uh, yeah, that's when I took the shot. Didn't even do anything to make her stop. Uh, I'm used to you know taking game on the move anyway, and she was just kind of walking. So... I put it exactly in the right spot. That ain't a baby. You got a rack on it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope not. Oh, that's a good. Okay. I'd say that's a two year old, though. That's what I was thinking though? when I saw her. You know, she had a little bit more belly and. That's a good. That's a very yeah. good side, though. Ain't no young one. <sighs> Right. First deer ever. Congratulations. Marty. Congratulations, <laughs> man. Great deer. Great doe. All right. Truly a good doe. Yeah, she expired in about 60 seconds, so it must have been a decent hit. Look at the view behind you. This is a good view. Lake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you shoot her shoulder, you think? I don't know. There's, saw, there's your entry one right there. Here you got blood. Oh, what happened? Oh, I'm still recording. Oh, yeah. That was Long shot. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's how, that's how it looked in the footage when I pulled the trigger. Nice. Oh, she's going to be good eating. All right. Guys, I am so jazzed. Awesome, man. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Glad I could be a part of it. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. Okay. You're probably pushing 100, 165, not, not 65. <sighs> nice. Good eating size dough. We did an analysis on the doe afterward, and these are definitely not safe for work images, so I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to put them. Uh, YouTube is not going to like these. Uh, I'll figure out a spot. I might link to it in the description or something if you want to see uh, what the entry exit and uh, the, the actual damage on the inside looks like. It was clean through and through, and it was devastating. We took the doe back to the shop. I grabbed a handful of beef jerky, and then we went right back out again. So I, this time I was in a bank blind called the stump and uh, I had some much shorter shots this time the last time I could have taken a shot up to about 400 yards uh, on this one my max was probably about 150 uh, maybe 120 at one of the spots but that was about it uh, but this sounded like it was going to be a pretty productive spot. The wind was going to be in my favor and uh, there was you know pretty good food plot out there. So I, I sat tight. It started to, the temperatures really started to drop quickly. And then little by little, animals started coming in. So we got some pretty decent sized does coming around first. And now my, I will mention this. I was tempted. My last tag could be antlered or antlerless. And considering the fact that we hadn't seen really any decent antlered uh, you know any bucks I was tempted to drop one of these does because there was an, you know another passel of good-looking does out there 
but I hung tight. Uh, I was patient. They came through, they ate, some spikes came down, and I was like, okay, things are moving much earlier today. I think this might be the one. These spikes came down and started, you know, kind of chasing the does around. They started tussling with each other, and uh, you can see some of the footage that we got here. It's kind of cool to see how actually respectful the animals are of each other when they get into these fights. It's not like, you know, here, I'm just here to kill you. It's, it's more like, you know, let's, let's fight this out, see who's dominant. And in the end, one of them did turn out to be dominant. But they were all kind of reacting to something off in the woods. They could hear something, they could smell something. And little by little, they all started clearing out, except for that one uh, spike. And then even that one spike cleared out as straight ahead of me, I, this thing just came out of the woods. It was a totally different presence than any of the other animals. It came in, you know, kind of heads low and, you know, kind of feeling things out and wondering if they're supposed to be there. This guy came out and he was the king of the forest. A totally different looking deer, totally different demeanor, just head up, huge chest, you know, he's just strutting his stuff out there very slowly. Comes out there, that little spike takes off and he gets down to eating, and he is just not really concerned at all. And then within a few seconds, as you see here, he turned broadside. The first thing that went through my mind was it felt like perfect shot placement. I always remember before I pulled the trigger what my reticle looked like and I had it exactly where I wanted it, right behind that shoulder, good vertical, and uh, it was definitely going to be an effective shot even though my second thought was that you know he donkey kicked and jumped into the corn. I knew that I had him. There was really no question about it. Now the third thing that went through my mind was, ow, <laughs> because uh, the, the tactic cam had smacked me in the forehead. I had been very careful all the other times, you know, in practice and, you know, taking that shot at the doe out in the field. I made very sure that I was very squarely into it because this takes up about an extra, Oh gosh, this is about an inch and a half that it takes off your eye relief. It's a good thing that I had the uh, the VX6 with its extra long eye relief. I think it, it has about four inches. It's a pretty long one. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, it takes off quite a bit there. And you have to make sure if you're shooting something that recoils pretty heavily like this was, uh, that yeah, if you're not behind it really well, it could come back and kiss you. And that's what it did. You know, I felt really good about this shot. I thought that I was all lined up, but I was not taking this into account on that shot. And the edge of the, the, the rubber right here, this kind of sharper edge just punched me right there. So. All right, I deserved it, and uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't angry at all. You know, he drew first blood, but I got uh, second there, and I, I took him out. I took a picture of my forehead, sent it out on YouTube without any kind of commentary on it. I didn't tell people, you know, exactly what had happened. They figured out that it was a scope kiss, but I told them to caption it, and so that's how we got that little contest. Uh, like I say, I had really good connection in that blind, so it was fun to uh, send some pics out to some folks. But yeah, I waited the usual half hour, the guides arrived, they brought a truck, and we went out into the corn to uh, follow this blood trail, which was spectacular. The, the corn on the exit side of the deer, it was just blood all the way down. And it went for about 75 yards, and at the end of the cornfield, just before getting to the woods, there he was laid out and he was a monster we weighed him afterward and he came out to be uh, 232.8 pounds if my memory serves me i'll actually show you the scale right here uh, but this guy was big they figured he was somewhere around five or six years old so we're talking about a very elderly deer now i have already tasted this buck and even though he's old he's tasty both him and the doe uh, we we did some of that processing yesterday and of course we had to sample our work we had to see if the sausage was good and if the uh, the ground was good and uh, oh man, he's, he's awesome. And uh, his tenderloin, my son actually uh, fried him up, kind of pan seared him in a cast iron pan with just a little bit of oil. 
Oh, wow, he was tender. Just a little salt and pepper, mind blowing. Great, great tasting deer. So all in all, a productive trip, but there are just a lot of great memories that come along with this, like meeting with some of the guys out there. Uh, Eric Poole from Guns and Ammo, that guy is a stitch, and he has the most insane stories. Uh, we told him that he has to do a, a documentary series. I'll go out and film it, I volunteer. Uh, but uh, we need to hear some of these stories from him because he has done some bizarre things and uh, yeah he, he's done some things that are very unique out there and I think more people need to hear about it and uh, we had Drew Warden from Fish and Game a great guy uh, it, it was good talking to you man and we had uh, Britt Jill uh, she has uh, a lot of her own uh, media out there like especially on Instagram and she handles accounts for a bunch of other folks uh, she was really fun and then we had uh, Jimmy from Winchester Jason from Winchester uh, just a, a great bunch of folks it was really cool to sit around with uh, you know with us the guides just kind of chilling after the hunt swapping stories and uh, I don't know listening to music doing all kinds of stuff it was it was a riotously good time it was definitely one of those memories that I'm gonna keep with me for the rest of my life there are certain kind of mountaintop experiences that I've had actually getting to the tops of certain mountains, like getting up to the top of Mount Emery, that one is just gonna stick in my mind forever. Uh, me and my brother going out there, that was a lot of fun. Going out to the Wichita Game Reserve, um, all, all kinds of hikes, like the Eagle Rock Loop that I've been on, and you know, hunting hogs. And now this hunt is, is just gonna be permanently etched for the rest of my life. Such an amazing experience. You might have heard me say this before, but these were actually my first deer. A lot of you don't know this about me. I've hunted all kinds of stuff. I've slain many prairie dogs. Uh, you know, we've done hog hunting that we've talked about here on this channel. We've done all kinds of stuff, coyotes. But deer have always been elusive here in Oklahoma for me. Uh, they're, they're highly pressured. And the places that I've gone out before, it's difficult to get what they're asking for. So like uh, down in the Okmulgee area, it's antlered only. But I think it's a joke because there are no antlered deer down there. So, you know, I've sat there and I've watched doe walk by right in front of my gun, uh, but I've never actually uh, seen a buck. I've never seen anything that I could actually take. Thank you to, to folks that actually did go out with me on those hunts. And even though they weren't productive, still a lot of fun. Or, you know, people that had me out to their private property, uh, something always went just a little bit awry, you know, like maybe the weather was wrong and I'm just jazzed to be able to uh, nail my first two deer and especially to pick up two such fine specimens, especially that buck. Uh, he's definitely something that's very special. And like I say, I'll carry that memory for the rest of my life. Thank you very much, everybody that has made this video possible. Make sure that you stick around, hit the, uh, the subscription button, hit the notification bell because we're gonna be talking about the gear that I brought out there and what I thought of it. I've taken these out on other kinds of hunts like hog hunts and we're going to talk about that a little bit um, but everything worked out really well I had everything that I needed everything was perfectly squared away and I want to talk about how uh, a lot of this gear worked out for me Many thanks to Winchester and Indian Hill Outfitters for having us out there, and thanks a lot to patrons of the Destructive Arts that make all these videos possible. The ones that provide lights and cameras, tripods, a bunch of the stuff that I took out in the field. Uh, we have Sportsman's Guide, Stan and Mary, and Tyler at the 338 Lapua Magnum level. And then we have Joseph Davis, Peter, Mr. No Name, and Howard at the 300 Win Mag level. And then we have a bunch of other folks that are chipping in a buck or two a month to help keep videos like these coming. They, uh, I guess they've been enjoying the content they like some of the series that I've done and I have a new series coming up you guys uh, I'm very excited about this this is one I've wanted to do for a couple years now and I kind of feel like I finally have the right momentum the right testing under my belt to show you guys uh, something that I think is going to be very useful and useful to a lot of your friends I'll see you guys around thanks for watching if you like this video be sure to like share and most importantly subscribe even if you didn't like this particular content go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the Destructive Arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.